And now our post-politics segment with Chris Saliz of the Washington Post. So, Chris, tomorrow we have the South Carolina runoff. Uh, Nikki Haley, any drama? We assume no, she's got the nomination. I don't think so. Look, she won 49 percent of the vote on on uh, June 4th. Uh, sorry, excuse me, June 8th. We're now two weeks right. away. It, it, she's just got to get to 50. It seems very likely she gets there. The question, I think, is how high does she go? She released internal polling last week that had her at 70. I mean, if she wins wow. 70 to 30, I think we're going to see a big Nikki Haley as future Republican star, no matter what percentage of the vote she gets tomorrow, unless it's under 50, of course. But I think yeah. the larger percentage of the vote she gets, the more will drive that storyline, that she kind of emerged from the, the cauldron, and I mean that in all the dark arts ways. <laughs> Is possible the cauldron of South Carolina politics to uh, to be the very likely next governor as the, an Indian American woman. Well, that's that's interesting because it gives a different face to the Republican Party. There's the possibility of and probability actually of a, a of a House race as well involving a, an African American yep. candidate. It's been a while since we had any Black members of Congress who are Republicans. Two thousand. I mean, I looked at this just because I'm a nerd and I'm interested in these things. I look back at 2002 was when J. C. Watts, the the last African American Republican House member, left. So yeah, I mean, you're talking about eight years. Uh, Tim Scott is the guy you're referring to. Uh, Rick State uh, Rep was running for lieutenant governor, uh, encouraged into this South Carolina one race, which of course has the distinction of being Mark Sanford's uh, old congressional district down there in Charleston, encouraged by national Republicans into this race for a number of reasons, including they thought he could win. But one big reason is they understand they need more diversity. They can't be the party of old white men and build a winning coalition in 2012. This is a step in that direction, they believe. Okay, so uh, we, we, we got to hit Joe Barton, though. You, you heard what Rahm Emanuel mm -hmm. said uh, yesterday on, on this week. I mean, are the Republicans going to be able to, to make an issue out of Joe Barton when nobody really knows That's who the guy is? My issue is probably less than 1% of the American public knows who Joe Barton is. Uh, probably 5% maybe of Republicans know who he is. Maybe. I mean, that may be that's an overestimation. Yeah. So the question is, no, they can't make this campaign about Joe Barton. What they can try and do, and I think what Rom talked about yesterday with Jake that they're going to try and do, is say, you may not know who this guy is, right? But he's the ranking Republican. He's an important Republican on this committee. And if he, if they get the House, you pointed this out, it's probably not going to be the case. But if they get the House, he's going to be in charge of energy policy. This is what this guy believes in his heart of hearts. You know, what Rom said, and I think this is an important point, is he said this was not made in kind of a back and forth uh, conversation with Tony Hayward. This was done in prepared remarks. So somebody, including Joe Barton theoretically, read it and said, yeah, this is what I want to say, that this represents what Republicans really think uh, about the oil industry, and do we want to go there? It's, it goes to the whole, is this a referendum on President Obama and Democrats, or is this a choice between President Obama and Democrats and Republicans? And Joe Barton. <laughs> right, right. See other Republicans. Well, the Democrats right. would love that if that yeah, was right, the case. see other Republicans say similar things, but I, if Republicans can't run effectively against Nancy Pelosi, Democrats are not going to be able to run against no, Joe Barton. No, and we, we've heard the we're running against Nancy Pelosi thing for quite some time. It, it, we saw in Pennsylvania 12 in that special election right. last month, Nancy right. Pelosi front and center. It didn't work. She at least is well known enough by most people in the country that you could justify that strategy. Joe Barton has the same name ID as me nationwide. <laughs> you know, so uh, it, it, I don't think you run a national campaign based around him. Again, symbolic of something larger, maybe. But I think we have to caution. Look at any poll out there. Economy still by far the it largest. Does give issue. Democrats something else to talk about, though? It changes it, it, the it, narrative, and that helped. Barack Obama was losing last week badly from the Oval Office speech on. Uh, uh, you know. You you had the BP executives continuing to say small people, things that they shouldn't right. say, Tony Hayward yachting yeah, uh, at yeah. the Isle of yeah. Wight. This allowed them to say, <laughs> see, we may not, you may not be thrilled with what we're doing, but look at what they're doing. Right, look right. at what they really think. Changing the narrative is always helpful, even if for only a couple days. All right. Chris Saliza from the Washington Post, the Fix Chris? columnist. Thanks, at guys. WashingtonPost.com, Post Politics. We appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you for having me. Well, let's work and on Chris's name ID. In the meantime, let's see if you yes. can beat Joe Barton. <laughs> Come on. What do you think? All right. Get up to He's five. Uh, so, that so doesn't the, the, the decision. Uh, Twitter.com slash the notes. The, 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 the yacht.